Bueno, uh, I think we can start. Uh, today we have uh, Jorge Ramos, Alcantara, uh, the second um, person to come from EO uh, to present. Uh, it doesn't mean that we are missing people to present. But <laughs> just a uh, he just started officially the PhD uh, it, like Monday, this Monday, yeah, this Monday. <laughs> He's doing it with Damia Gomis and Diel Jorda. He's been working with them for like two years, and now he is going to move out uh, to Malaga to work also with Javi Soto, that was here also. Mm -hmm. And we wish him all the best for his PhD. And thank you for presenting your work. Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, most of you, I think, you already know me because I was working here for almost two years, and uh, since then uh, I was now working. I'm now working at the Oceanographic <coughs> Paleolithic Center, and well, during all this time, this work uh, was born. Um, well, the first question will be: Can we estimate the sea level uh, on coast where there are no measurements? Let's see. Uh, well, um, the um, mean sea level rise um, associated with the climate change uh, can have uh, significant impacts on coast or, or low elevation region, regions. Uh, also, the extreme events uh, can cause significant uh, more devastating effects uh, on, on the coast under a scenario of rising mean sea level. And in the specific case of the uh, South Europe, uh, it is expected that the um, uh, mean sea level rise uh, can have important impacts. So uh, we need um, to make a proper coastal management. Uh, we need oceanographic uh, databases uh, and specifically uh, of sea level um, on the coast. And the ideal coastal sea level databases uh, will have an adequate spatial resolution and also must be uh, long enough. Uh, on one hand, uh, we don't expect that the sea level is going to change in the same way uh, all along the coast. There are um, processes, several processes that introduce um, variability at shorter scales uh, on the coastal regions, and that's because um, mainly due to the um, uh, shallow depth and also the complex morphology that we have uh, on the coastal region. And also, we need, uh, as I said, long enough series, uh, especially if we want to study um, uh, low frequency processes, like, for example, to estimate the, the sea level trends on, on the coast. So, what, uh, let's review the, um, the source of observation we have. Uh, the main source of, of observation of sea level at the coastal region are the state gauges. Um, they have been used for, for centuries um, and they can provide a accurate series, really accurate series, but uh, they, have, they have a main limitation and that's it, that uh, they provide point-wise measurement, uh, that's it, uh, all the information uh, of the location where they are installed, so um, they don't give uh, that point of um, spatial resolution we, we need. And also they have an heterogeneous distribution, uh, heterogeneous spatial distribution and also heterogeneous um, uh, temporal coverage. On the other hand, uh, since uh, 1992, we have uh, measurement from satel uh, altimetric satellite. Um, they have um, quasi-global coverage, but uh, they have um, limited spatial and temporal resolution also. And the main limitation will be that they have um, important problems uh, when measuring near the coastline. Um, the last um, altimetric uh, product, standard products, um, are only available like from five to ten kilometers uh, offshore. Um, and also the tracks are widely separated uh, in space. And the revisiting time is about uh, some days. Um, in addition, we also have uh, other sorts of information. For, for example, um, we have uh, other sea level reconstructions. But uh, as far as we know, uh, uh, all of them are for the open ocean region. And until now, there is no uh, sea level reconstruction specific for the coastal region. 
So let's set the objectives. Uh, we want to develop a sea level series on the entire Western Mediterranean, also in the location where there are no no observation, no 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 date gauges um, from existing date gauges observation for several decades. We want also to quantify the error of the estimated series. Um, to compare the accuracy of the reconstructed series with uh, that of last generation coastal altimetry, and also to explore the possible applicability and limitation of this, uh, this reconstruction. Um, here I, I show you the, um, the tape gauges we used for the reconstructions. Uh, we have 38 tape gauges uh, with monthly data from the permanent service of mean sea level which is an international data database. And also we have uh, 34 deep gauges with daily data from Kreslachiu, another database. On the maps we can see the location of the deep gauges and also the temporal coverage of, of them. Um, the method. Uh, we developed an optimal interpolation method, which is a um, statistical, a kind of a statistical um, interpolation. Um, keep calm, these are the only two equations I'm going to show you today, so don't worry. Uh, the, um, in the first one, we have the main equation we, we use for the reconstruction. The first phi g, fg will be the, the, the vector, <coughs> the state vector of the system, uh, the first guess. Uh, the um, theta will be the correlation matrix. Uh, between the observation point and the reconstruction points, she will be the observation, the, sorry, the correlation matrix uh, for the observation plus the noise, and the last phi will be, we are here, okay, the last phi will be the, the vector of observations. Uh, usually when applying this kind of methodologies, um, uh, analytical functions are usually um, fit uh, for, for um, calculate these correlations. In, th in this case, we, we use the output of the SOFIP uh, numerical model, WMOP, uh, to, to calculate uh, these or compute these correlations between the, the reconstruction points. Uh, here on the right, we have the, the spatial coverage of this model. And also, um, another advantage of this methodology is that the, the optimal interpolation formulation give us explicitly the, the, an expression for calculating the, the error of analysis, which is this one, <coughs> where the sigma sub g will be the variance of the observations. So what we do is to reconstruct, uh, reconstruct at each uh, point and also at each moment. So this error of analysis will be um, larger, the fewer observation we have each moment. The reconstruction was carried out in four frequency bands, a period of uh, more than 10 years, between one year and 10 years, between one month and one year, and between one day and one month. Um, what we have in the maps are the location of the tape gauges used uh, at each uh, frequency band. And on the right, uh, just for getting an idea of the scale of the processes that are found uh, on, at each frequency band, this is a reconstruction for 15 years uh, and uh, a random point, I don't know where it is, um, but well, just for, for getting the idea. Um, some results. Okay, uh, the reconstruction are made up, uh, have been made available for everyone who wants to use them. <coughs> uh, um, also, we have the four frequency band I told you, but also, we uni unify them into monthly and daily series. Uh, what we have here is the monthly case, and this is a point close to, to Palma de Mallorca uh, with the uncertainty intervals in red, <coughs> and a zoom of this series. Uh, the, the monthly case covered from 1884 to 2019, and in the map we can see the, the, the average of the uh, analysis error for all the Western Mediterranean. We find a larger error for the places where there are no observations, for example, the Algerian Al Al coast, um, and also in places where the series uh, have shorter duration, like for example in the uh, Balearic Island. Uh, 
Uh, at this point, I'm gonna stop a bit for explain or um, make a brief uh, clarification about the validation method. When uh, we develop like a data set like this, it's uh, essential to validate it. I can have, I can have a wonderful data set, but if it has nothing to be with the observation, it's completely useful. A useless, sorry. Um, so the problem or the difficulty we have here is that the, the only observation available are the same observation we have used for the reconstruction. So we need a way to independently compare the reconstruction with the with the observation. Uh, what we do is to um, reconstruct at the point closest to each state gauge without uh, the state gauge. For example, we reconstruct for the closest point to the Ibiza state gauge with all the observation available but uh, without Ibiza. And we repeat it for all the stations. And in that way, we can compare independently the, the observation with the reconstructions. <clears throat> this is uh, these are the results for the this cross validation test for the Monday case. Um, well, they are pretty well, pretty good results. Um, we have uh, maximum root mean square error values. Um, we are comparing here uh, the the observation with the reconstruction, uh, as I told you, um, through the cross validation test. So the maximum root mean square error values are of 6.6 .6 centimeters, the explained variance between 34 and 90 percent, and correlation between 0 0.557 uh, and 0 0.92. This is for the monthly case and for the daily case. <coughs> I haven't told you, but the daily case covered from the uh, 1980 to 2015. Um, uh, we found uh, maximum root mean square error values of uh, 10 centimeters, but I have to say that this, this value is an exception because if you see the map, uh, most of the root mean square errors values are between 2 or 5 centimeters. Um, maybe you can notice that there is an, an area uh, where the results are uh, worse in general. Let's talk about this later. Uh, and the explained variances between uh, 40 and 90 percent, and the correlation uh, a minimum value of 0 0.7. So <clears throat> let's talk about this. Um, this will be an example of good skills for the Genoa dead gauge. Um, we have the four frequency band I told you before, and uh, in blue will be the observation original series. The, in, in red will be the reconstructed series. And in gray, the uncertainty interval, so the analysis error interval. Um, we see that the, the period of more than 10 years, the, the first one, uh, matched really well with the, the observations. Also, the highest frequencies between one day and one month uh, match pretty well. But in the intermediate um, frequency bands, uh, the interannual and intraannual frequency bands, uh, the explained variances values are lower, probably because there, there are processes there are processes there that are not being completely well interpolated by the by the methodology. Um, on the other hand, this would be an example of low skill for tarifa state gates. Uh, well, the, the, the area where the worst results are found is the Strait of Gibraltar area. And what we see here is that the the period of more uh, more than ten years uh, still reproduce uh, well the, the the observation series. Um, on the highest frequencies, we we find some kind of um, unrealistic peaks, uh, but still the the explain variance is uh, more or less well. But again, in the intermediate frequencies. <clears throat> the explained values, uh, explained variance values are really low. Um, well, this is suggesting us that in this area uh, there is a kind of variability that is not uh, well reproduced by the by the interpolation model, but also could be uh, problems in the original series, as other authors previously 
considered for take gauges in the in this area. Um, in any case, this is an exception, and as, as you you saw before, in general, the the, the growth prediction tests offer good results for our abstractions. Um, so now the most awaited question: uh, Are reconstructions estimate really better than coastal altimetry? Well, yes, yes, they are. Uh, on the left, the column of the on the left, we compared the the reconstruction series with the the dead gauge series. Um, we we are plotting the correlation values for the four frequency band, and on the right, uh, the comparison between the altimetry series and the reconstructed and the dead gauge series. Um, I have to say that the ultimately series uh, are provided by Copernicus program and they have already applied um, some correction. For example, uh, they, the removal of the high frequency because it's a way for uh, avoiding the aliasing. And we need to add it back. So what uh, we see here, the dynamic atmospheric correction is this, this this correction uh, added back to the altimetry series in order to compare them in, in, the, in the same way, uh, equal terms. Um, and what we, what we see here in the average uh, correlation values is that the, the reconstruction uh, reach uh, significantly better correlation values with the observations. And we can conclude that using tech gauges uh, data, data in an optimal way allows for the retrieval of coastal sea level with a significantly higher accuracy than using altimetric uh, products of last generation for all time scales. Uh, okay, let's see some examples of application. For example, we can we can calculate the coastal sea level trends uh, with our reconstruction and with the advantage that we can do it for the whole uh, coastline and also for long periods. So um, for the period covered by the altimetry, which is uh, between 1993 uh, to the, in this case to 2019, uh, we have a value for the reconstruction uh, of 2.70, which is close to the altimetric uh, average value also. But uh, we see that um, this is, uh, we, we find a, a smoother continuity for the reconstruction along the, the coastline. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with the pattern we see for the altimetry, uh, there is a lack of physical sense, probably um, because of the limitation that the altimetry finds on the coastal region. And for the whole period of the reconstruction since 1884, the, the average uh, value for the basin is 1.2 millimeters per year. Uh, this value is, uh, is uh, something similar than other authors uh, calculate for the, for the Mediterranean region and also uh, is uh, similar to the value for the global sea level trends, which is uh, between 1 and 2 millimeters per year. Uh, we found uh, the maximum value for the Gulf of Lyon around 1.5 millimeters per year, and the, the minimum one would be at the, the Gibraltar Strait area. Another example, uh, for example, we can uh, investigate the, uh, the influence of the main climate modes uh, on the sea level, coastal sea level variability. Um, the main climate index for the Mediterranean region will be the North Atlantic, the East Atlantic, its Atlantic Western Russian, and Scandinavian one. Uh, in this plot, uh, many, maybe too much information, but uh, we have uh, by columns the, each of these indices and by rows uh, each um, season. And what we can see here is that, well, now, well, we are only representing the stati statistical significant uh, <coughs> correlations. Uh, and what we see here is that the uh, North Atlantic index is something correlated with this sea level, uh, East Atlantic and uh, Scandinavian, so positive correlation in, in general. Um, 
In winter, we have uh, two indices uh, dominating, uh, the North Atlantic and also the, um, the Scandinavian. And in spring, uh, the East Atlantic is clearly the dominant one over the, the others. During summer, the East Atlantic is the, the dominating one and have a basin wide positive correlation, while the East Atlantic uh, West Russian will be the, uh, the one who has a negative correlation. So it is possible to, to extrapolate this method to other coastal regions. Well, it is possible, uh, but uh, we will have uh, two main limitations. Uh, the first one is that the correlation matrices I, I told you before must be uh, accurately uh, calculated. We need a um, reliable uh, data, data set that, for example, in our case, the, the SOFIB model. But maybe in other coastal regions, that uh, possibility is not there. So uh, in that case, we will need to, to use the analytical function that could be a bit less uh, reliable. And also, of course, we need uh, um, long enough uh, take gauges series. And also, uh, they, they need to be more or less uniformly distribute, distributed. Because, um, of course, imagine that I only have series on, uh, around Mallorca. I cannot reconstruct the, the sea level on Ceuta, for example. So the, the, the applicability of the method is conditioned by the, the ability of a good number of observation, uh, but also uh, by their spatial distribution. Some conclusions. Uh, the method successfully reconstructs the, the sea level along the, the coast. Compared with the, the observation, uh, the reconstruction provides significantly better results than coastal altimetry. Uh, the cross-validation tests provide uh, complementary measure measurements of the error and therefore verify the goodness of our reconstructions. And also, as I told you lastly, the, the, the method can be extrapolated to other coastal regions with the limitation I, I said. Uh, well, if you want more details about the, the, the work, you can check our paper um, published on Ocean Science. And also the data set is uh, available, freely available in the Pangea repository. And that should be all. Thank you all for your attention. Which are the processes that you mentioned on the on the on the intermediate scales that you were not resolving properly? We don't really know. Maybe um, could be local forces, but uh, of course there, there's something there that uh, because it's uh, so so general for all the I'm gonna say it, for all the 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 the, the reconstructions uh, through the cross variation that test that we usually find a better um, coincidence in the, in the higher and the lower frequencies, but poorer uh, in, in the in the interannual and intraannual. I cannot say exactly exactly why, but well, also uh, thank you for the question, Mike, because I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the, the splitting in frequencies uh, is important. Uh, it's not arbitrary. Is because uh, in that way uh, we can separate the, the processes that we know there there are in each frequency band, and also uh, usually the lowest frequencies could be masked uh, with the the highest frequencies, and in this way we ensure this this is this is not happening. But uh, I cannot say say exactly what processes are giving us problem there. Mm. You could, I, mean, I suppose you consider that, uh, to compute the correlation from WMOP, the C level, am I right? Or, mm -hmm. But <coughs> have you wondered about using different variables the model or from directly from satellites like SST, core field images, that maybe they are not an integrated variable but they give you a better resolution? Or even, I, I don't know if you know, Armor 1st D problem? 
that you have like a reconstruction of the uh, for the Mediterranean, they have the specific mm -hmm. product, and they combine a lot of different data to have a reconstruction of the Mediterranean Sea, and you can extract a correlation matrix for them. And in case, yeah, just you can do it on your own, yeah. So I don't know if you uh, I didn't know the last one, uh, what's the name? Uh, Armor 3D. 3D. Mm -hmm. 3D. Okay, uh, and the other question, um, you are saying to calculate the correlation between other data set, not C level data, data yeah, set? Yeah, using like, you need correlation from point to point, and so you uh -huh. can compute that from any maps that you can obtain. Uh -huh. so instead of using the WMOP, that in the end is a model, you can use uh, the real data and you have SST, like a C surface temperature, color field, or. Yeah, that's an option we, we haven't considered. Of course, we cannot use the C level. Coastal alternative yeah. product for yeah. obvious reasons. Um, well, we, we find the, the model, we also take the advantage to use the, the coastal grid of the model for the reconstruction, so the, the reconstruction points are from, from the model. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think could be other options to, to calculate the, the correlation and also in other regions uh, should be considered. Yeah, you have a global coverage and the resolution is a bit smoother than uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just found out with that gauge where if you want to go so don't expect much from me. Uh, why can you use the satellites? What's the they don't have enough solution or what or it's for, for the for the issues with the sea and the land? What's the problem? That's it the problem. Uh, of course uh, the altimetric products are a revolution in general. Uh, they provide uh, accurate uh, data for the open ocean, the, but uh, the altimetric product I, I mean but in the coastal region, the, the radar of the satellite they interact with the with the land and with the bottom, and it's not uh, reliable data. That's the main reason. So when you are meaning altimetry here, you were meaning satellite measurements. Yeah, altimetric. The uh, altimetric is the technique for uh, measure the sea level. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm not a, a, an expert on this, but uh, anyway, uh, I don't quite understand where you want to go with it. With all it. I, I understand the, the, the things behind that. In one sense, uh, trends are not uh, very locally, very variable, as far as I understand, around the Mediterranean. So you've got like 10 uh, centimeters or whatever in the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, uh, estimating the trends uh, at local uh, locally, it doesn't make much sense because it doesn't vary much. So, I guess that the uh, most relevant part of, of, of the analysis is just uh, to understand which uh, the local processes are, uh, or which is the effect of local processes in a shorter term variability. I guess where uh, because you have the, the obviously the sea level, you have the the component of the, the astronomic component, and you are, then you have the meteorologic component, and then you have uh, the wind set up or whatever. So, so that that makes the, the and and the difference from one side to other side, I guess, is uh, basically in the uh, meteorologic component and the wind set up, not in the astronomical component, which is re relatively predictable, as far as I understand. Uh, so. The, the thing I, I would understand that the the, 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 the objective of re reconstructing of the time series is basically is to see how uh, locally those uh, episodes can can affect. Is that is that correct? Or is, mm. Well, it could be that's an explanation for the splitting frequencies. Of course, we we expect to find <coughs> different processes uh, in each frequency band. But I really think that there there is um, a gap of information in the coastal region. Yes, of course, um, a slow processes of like trends are expected to be similar uh, in all the region. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why we have uh, the, the other the other frequencies. Um, this is about uh, the astronomical. The yeah, astronomical is uh, predictable, but uh, the the astronomical data is really really different uh, uh, along the the the, the basin. Yeah, for sure. That, that's relatively predictable. I mean, that's uh, you can. Yeah, that's uh, the most predictable, predictable thing. I would think that 
uh, the problems or the errors you, you commit is probably more, more in the effect of uh, the synoptic uh, period and the uh, meteorological uh, influences in your model than on the uh, astronomical uh, time. But uh, the main objective was that, uh, to, to provide uh, information where, where there are no observations. Mm -hmm. And we really believe that this is necessary. Maybe, as you said, uh, no, no, nor in the, not in the lowest frequency, mm -hmm. but, well, we have uh, more or less high frequency at the really high resolution over the coastline. And we think that this, this is really useful for several several approaches uh, of physical astronomy in the coast. No, no, I, I, I do understand that. Yeah. But, uh, but I would focus that on, on the uh, highest frequencies, not mm -hmm. in, the, in the long term. And the second thing that uh, uh, really uh, shocked me uh, uh, is that uh, um, I would assume that uh, uh, if you have a, a trend that is related to, to global warming, uh -huh. uh, that would uh, start like in the mid uh, in the in the 40s, in 1940s or so that. but this that's quite line, linear. It seems to to start even before, <coughs> doesn't it? I mean, in, no, it just in, in, in the trend you have. There. Ah, okay. So it's continuously linear. I would expect something more exponential or something like that. Um, I, I don't know if all the series are, are the same or. Yeah, I I know what you you want to say. Uh, well, of course, uh, if you see the the, the values um, found here. Oops. Uh, the the last period is uh, two point seven, mm -hmm. and uh, the the whole period is uh, one point two. So maybe it cannot be seen here, but the 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 the, 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 the trend is uh, much bigger at the at the end, as so all, all the all the decades series uh, uh, say that. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe it cannot be seen so clearly here, but it's like this, obviously. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it can also be modulated by climate, climatic uh, patterns, like, like the now in the 70s and in the 90s. It's a counter effect of the sea level rise, so maybe you need a, maybe of a higher frequency within the 10 years. If you don't see, because the, the sea level has increased a little bit at, at the end, as I said, then you cannot see, but it's also modulated by yeah, I just, I just, I just was, uh, of course there is an hysteric effect, I just I was wondering whether uh, evaporation is compensating in some sense the, the sea level rise in the Mediterranean. Because at the end you, you need more water from the Atlantic to uh, just to keep the level. Yeah, I think I am really sure about this, but I think that the Mediterranean trends are in general uh, lower than the, mm. the rest of the, of the ocean. And that's also why in the Strait of Gibraltar you have more problems yeah. with tide gauges. Because you had one tide gauge, no, two tide gauges in the Gibraltar Straits, one that worked, you had good correlation, and the other one, uh, yeah, uh, maybe it, it comes from this tide gauge. There is, there is probably a, well, I can't say for sure, but the, the Cadiz uh, tide gauge have been reported to, to have spurious trends. Uh, also, in a, in a paper of uh, Marta Marcos and Simplice, uh, 2008, I think. Uh, and, well, you cannot say, okay, I'm not going to use it because it's, it's bad. Well, we don't know. There is no official document saying that uh, there is a malfunctioning with this tail gauge, but, uh, of course, it's really, really strange. Can you have very static uh, Because that's uh, an area which is... Uh, 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 tectonically very active, uh, could that be, uh, or, or is that 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 is accounted for the just the change in the in the air of level actually? Yeah, but uh, in that case, it should be the same for the for all the tail gauges there. I mean, we have Tarifa, well, we have Theta, we have. Uh, well, depending of the fractures that you have there in the terrain. So in general, uh, this region is not um, well. Maybe the spread yet, but uh, there is no so much influence of the of the. Uh, terrain moves, uh, the, 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 the Adriatic zone or area is much uh, problematic in that sense, but we are not considering it, uh, <laughs> so we, we, haven't, we haven't corrected the, 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 the TPG series because of that, because we, we didn't think it's worth it.
all, all these uh, that we talked about, uh, these local po um, processes, like atmosphere forcing, you are basically uh, filtering all of it almost. Because uh, until uh, they, uh, is it possible your method to apply it at higher frequency? Uh, as higher than, uh, because you use the daily data of time gauges in monthly, mm -hmm. but uh, you could you with with the same on the same period you could be used until hourly data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we could do that, but mm -hmm. well, uh, we we weren't looking for so so high frequency. Maybe it's and, much harder. And I'm also, compute it has a computational computational cost. Uh, well, I have the resources I have, and my computer do what it can, can do. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, of course. And also, for example, the daily reconstruction would be done from maybe 1940 or something like that, which is the first measurement. But we only did it um, since uh, 1980 because of that mainly. Yeah, but the last question. <laughs> Uh, so your ultimate three data yeah, you corrected it with the dynamic atmosphere correction. Mm -hmm. Where did you take that? Had the duck product? Um, the, from the comments? Uh, Avi Aviso. Aviso from the provider. From the France. Uh, I don't remember the name, but I know you, you know it. Uh, well, it's another data provider. Quick uh, comment, maybe you're interested in it, and maybe you already know it. Uh, you know the SWAT satellite has been deployed in the past December. Sentinel? Mm -hmm. No, it's no, a SWAT. No. It's called SWAT. It's okay. another project from NASA and NES. Mm -hmm. We are collaborating a bit. And they say that maybe in August there will be a first release of the L2 product. Mm -hmm. And they just pass close to Mallorca. We are not sure yes. that it's going to be close to the coast, but surely close to the peninsula. So. You will have like high resolution data, and you can have, you know make for the check if you want. Yeah, it will be it will be nice. Yes, um, of course, it has been developed, developing a lot of. Uh, I mean, uh, there is so many people working on that, and um, well, I, I really hope in the future we, we can have uh, coast altimetric uh, reliable products. But uh, what we have now is uh, is that and. Well, we want to offer and I'll see you because you know, like in my close to Mallorca and maybe even close to uh, to the coast of Spain, you are gonna we are gonna have for like ninety days every day we are gonna have a snapshot uh, like a passage of the satellite of mm -hmm. the boat satellite. So it's gonna be just a phase, just for three months, and then you know it's gonna be like once every twenty days. So for these three months, you have a lot of data and you can check you know if your model works or whatever. It's like kind of like a fast something phase they call it, and it's a good occasion for me. I will I will keep in the attention on that, and, and let's see. Thank you. But after all, you have a, it does work very well, no? Yeah. The correlation of are pretty high. It's some always uh, higher than nine. Yeah, I have to say that there is a little trick here. Uh, <laughs> uh, these correlations are of course for the altimetric uh, period. Uh, and in that period, the last, the last one, uh, there are so many available databases. So if you if you could compare your canon because the alternative cover was covered uh, for the whole period, probably it will be it will be a, a less worse. But uh, for this period, is uh, we we reach really good results. And Any other question? No? Thank you, Jorge. So, we we'll be time. Yes. <laughs> First, the chairs. Okay. <laughs>